Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Eva. Today we are going to be talking, demoing, swatching, reviewing, first impressioning the new Hourglass Holiday Ambient Lighting Palettes. Now I have my stupid little headband on because we are going to be doing applications. We are going to be applying these to the face, to the eyes. I am so excited. So if you are interested in hearing all about the new Hourglass palettes, seeing me demo two of them and then swatch three of them, I'll explain shortly, then go ahead and keep on watching. You are probably well aware, but Hourglass launched their highly anticipated holiday ambient lighting palettes. Now this year they launched three palettes, but they launched four different artwork covers. Let me explain. So on the Hourglass website, you actually can customize what outer packaging you want for the palette. So you can customize it. So if you actually wanted the jellyfish palette, you could, but you wanted the snake on the cover, you can customize it. They have a fourth option exclusive to the website, which is the owl. So I know there was like initially a lot of confusion, like what happened to the owl palette? The owl is just a cover. Now I picked up the palettes in the packaging that they are going to be in Sephora because for me, I was like, if I film this, it's just gonna create too much confusion. So for me, my jellyfish palette is the jellyfish palette and my snake palette is the snake palette. Now that third palette, the leopard palette or the jaguar palette, there was only one shade in that that is new. So I'm going to be going through my collection later because I'm pretty sure I may like already also own that palette with the exception of one shade. So I hope that's the case. That way I can do some extensive, sw extensive swatches and comparisons of all three of them, but we will see what happens. Let's start off by talking about pricing. These are a painful $90, $90. These have crept up so much over the years. I could have sworn that three years ago, these were $70. I know last year they were 80 and now they're 90. I know inflation is impacting businesses, impacting you and me, everyone, but that just feels like such a big jump. I know at the end of the day, they are a business and they are trying to make money, but I'm kind of like, mm, you couldn't have like eaten in the margin just a little bit to not do a $10 price hike. So that's just the first warning is these are very expensive. Now for date. So these are live on the Hourglass website. I will have my affiliate link down below. If you choose to purchase, I would appreciate if you consider purchasing through my link. It does really help my channel because I'm not monetized. I don't earn anything from YouTube. The only way I can earn money to purchase more makeup is through those links. So that's my, that's my spiel. Um, but they will be launching at Sephora on September 22nd. If you are watching this after that date, I will also have the Sephora links down below if you choose to purchase through Sephora. Now for this collection or for the holiday collection, I did want to also mention the brand is going to be launching their duo of those Phantom Glossy Bombs. They launched a duo last year they're incredible. Absolutely love those. Highly recommend you check those out when that set launches. It is going to be launching on the 22nd as well. And according to my notes from a message, they are going to be launching with the shade Haze and then with a new limited edition shade Crave. So I wanted to also throw that out. They are also releasing that duo again, which is very exciting. I don't want to spend too much time like going over the packaging and the artwork, but Let's go ahead and spend a few minutes on it. One thing I did want to say is I do really like that they took the time to manufacture the outer packaging as well to represent the inner packaging. That's a nice touch, but also I'm like, mm, how much did that add to the order? You know, like, did we actually need to do that? But it is a nice touch. Okay, so for the jellyfish palette, here is what she looks like. Um, I like that they were like very precious about the packaging. My order was packed very well and they have a little protective sheet over it. This is what she looks like. Ooh, she is pretty. And this is their normal tin packaging with 
a mirror here. I don't want to blind you. This is the jellyfish. And now let's talk about the snake. I know a lot of people were excited by this artwork. Personally, I hate it. Like, I find the animal artwork on things so creepy. Like, respectfully, Chantecaille. I know Chantecaille's products go to different wildlife funds, so that's the purpose. And I think like 5% of these hourglass ones go to some sort of fund, but maybe I'm just a hater, but I actually like don't really like the packaging. It is, okay, I'm backing up. It is very beautiful. It's just not, it's not for me, you know, like I like cutesy things and the snake is not cute. It's creepy. Um, but I did actually buy the product to test it and not to just comment on whether or not I like snakes. Okay, so here is the inside of the snake palette. Now, the jellyfish palette is the one that is marketed for fair to light skin tones, as you can tell from here. And then the snake one is actually marketed, or at least to me from the images, for deeper skin tones, but this one had the highest amount of new shades. I am fairly certain that according to my notes, all but one of these are new shades. So let me actually, I'm gonna go ahead and check on that really quickly. Okay, yes, I'm correct. In the Snake palette, the only repeat shade we have is this finishing powder here. All of these other shades are new. For the Jellyfish palette, we have half and half. So three are repeat shades, three are new shades. So for the new shades, we have the Blush, Rose Fusion, the Bronzer, and then the Strobe Light is new over here. And when I do the swatches, I will also put a star next to the ones that are new so you're aware which ones are the new limited edition shades. Let's go ahead and get into application. I want to get these on my face. I want to talk through the formula, the application, how I think these colors will wear best on me. Some of them I am going to wear on my eyes. And then we're going to go through like swatches and then I'm going to do a ton of comparisons. I'm going to set aside time to go through my hourglass collection, do extensive swatches and comparisons because I understand this is a hefty investment. So we want to make sure that you are purchasing wisely. And if you already have it in your collection, you can skip it. I'm going to go ahead and use the jellyfish palette all at once and then the snake palette all at once. So let's start off with the jellyfish palette. I have my foundation, concealer, and eye primer on. I do not have setting powder on. I don't have anything else on. So let's go ahead and get started with the jellyfish palette. In the jellyfish palette, we have two different finishing powders. So we have ethereal light, and then we also have diffused light. I am going to go ahead and use ethereal light here under my eyes because it is a bit lighter and more of a brightening powder. And then I'm going to use diffused light all over the face. Ethereal light, I'm going in with my Ruffer 18 brush. I like this as an under eye brush. And I just applying that. I'm also going to apply it a little bit like on my eyelids as well. And if you've never tried the ambient lighting powders, they are really, really beautiful. They are very finely milled. They're very brightening. You can see this is the ethereal light one and they're just really really flattering and great for all skin types okay i really like this on my eyes very very brightening let's move on to diffuse light and get that all over the face for that i'm gonna go in with this bk beauty 103 brush i'm not too picky with my brushes when it comes to overall face powders so we are just putting this all over the face and it gives such a beautiful glow without making you look like a tin man. That's one of the things that's so special about the hourglass powders is they're really, really brightening. 
but they're not so brightening that like you can't apply them all over the face. Okay, so we have diffuse light all over the face and it really does bring down like the oiliness of a foundation while still leaving you looking like you have a healthy glow. Now for bronzer, we're gonna go in with the bronzer shade here, which is Lunar Bronze, and this is a new bronzer. I'm gonna go in with an oldie, but goodie brush. I used to use this brush all the time and I found it and washed it and it's an old Too Faced one. I just like when I'm applying bronzer sometimes to have one that has a little bit more of a, a point. Okay, so we are going into that bronzer shade and just gonna start getting it on here. So pretty. That is really pretty. So here's the bronzer on my cheeks. I'm gonna also carry it down my neck a little bit and then get it on the forehead to really wake me up. Super, super pretty. And the thing I really like about these powders is they're very forgiving. Like it's really hard to mess up application of an hourglass powder because they are so finely milled and they have that glow and they're just really great for beginners despite the non-beginner friendly price point. Okay, so we are bronze, we have our complexion. Now let's apply blushes. So we have two blushes in here. One of them is a repeat, which I definitely have, I'm, I'm sure I have it, is Diffused Heat. And then we have Rose Fusion, which is new. Let me go ahead and swatch these on the fingers and then we'll still do, of course, arm swatches. But this is Rose Fusion here and then Diffused Heat here. So I'm gonna go in with Rose Fusion because I'm sure you've probably seen Diffused Heat on the face before. I'm gonna go in with this Kaleidos blush brush I like how like weird and pointy this is for a blush brush. And we are just gonna apply, ooh, that is so pretty. I'm actually gonna use this mirror. I don't know why I haven't been using this one. The mirror in here is great, by the way. Good size. Ooh, okay, that is so pretty. That Rose Fusion shade is beautiful. This is right up my alley as far as the types of blush shades I like to gravitate towards. I really like a kind of tawny brown rosy shade of blush, especially for fall and winter. And that is exactly what this is. Very, very excited about that blush shade. So pretty. Now let's go in to the strobe shade. So this is the highlighter shade and this is opal strobe light, which is a new shade. Very, very pretty. And to apply this, I am going to just go in with my Ruffer fan brush. Whoa, okay, that is beautiful. That is stunning, as they say on Love Island. That gives like such a beautiful, like wet look to the skin. A little to the cupid's bow. Wow, that is very, very beautiful. Okay, so this is the look with just the Jellyfish palette on. We used everything except for diffused heat from the palette. Now let's dive into the Slytherin Snake palette. You know what? It actually is fitting that I got the snake one because I am definitely a Slytherin. So this one has all new shades with the exception of one repeat. So the one repeat we have is this finishing powder up here, everything else is new. Let me go through the shades. So we have Radiant Light Finishing Powder, which is a repeat, and then we have Coral Haze Blush, which is new, and then we have a new highlighter, which is the new Infinite Strobe Light. We have Solar Bronze, the bronzer, and then two more new blushes. We have Mystic Flush, and then Sunbeam. I'm gonna do some quick finger swatches of the blushes, and then we will, of course, do arm swatches as well. 
Ooh, so pretty. Okay, so in the middle here, let's get this to focus. We have coral haze. On this finger here, my pointer finger, we have sunbeam. And then here on this finger, we have the shade Mystic Flush. Now let's go ahead and use these. I am going to mainly use these on the eyes. I may also use some of these blushes again on my face, but I, I don't wanna remove what I already have on because it's so pretty, but I will get some of those on my face as well. So rest be assured. Let's start playing around with these on the eyes. I'm gonna take this Laura Lee brush and I'm gonna go into that repeat shade of the finishing powder, which for me is gonna be a nice, beautiful, all over subtle eyeshadow because of my skin tone. Ooh, that is very pretty. Okay, we have that all over the eyes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that bronzer shade on a crease brush. This is the Zoeva Luxe Soft Crease Brush. And I'm just gonna work that in my crease. Oh. These blend so beautifully. You know, it's so strange that Hourglass has not been able to successfully do eyeshadows. Like their eyeshadow launch was honestly one of the biggest makeup flops in history. Like I kind of want to do a series all about like historical makeup moments in my life. And one of them was the Hourglass eyeshadow flop. That was very shocking. So it is strange that they haven't like landed powder eyeshadow as well, considering their powder face products are so good. And to be honest, like these work amazing as eyeshadows. Just, I would love, I would love to see, I would love to see the emails. I would love to see the emails uh, and find out who got fired after that eyeshadow flop. Okay, so we have that bronzer just like very quickly and messily put through the crease. And that is so flattering. Honestly, I could in here put on mascara and put on some eyebrows and be done. And I think this is a very beautiful, minimal eye makeup. This is very like it girl eye makeup in my opinion. Okay, I zoomed you in a little more. We are gonna keep going though. We wanna get as many of these on our eyes and face as possible. So next I'm gonna go in to this very, very shimmery, bronzy, blush shade. This one is the shade Sunbeam and I'm going in with a BK Beauty brush. This is the 203 and I'm going to apply this on my lid. Ooh, this is so pretty. These tones um, for me are very complementary to my blue eyes because they're on the opposite end of the color wheel. So these types of shades like really help make my eyes pop. Okay, so we have this on as an all over lid shade. Super pretty, very pretty. Um, now I want to go in and use the highlighter shade. Let me just swatch that for you. Ooh, that is so pretty. This is definitely more of a gold shade. So I would not be able to wear this on my skin. Excuse me, I would not be able to wear this on my cheeks, but Let's go ahead and add this to my eye look. I'm gonna go in with my finger and I'm just gonna tap this on. And these all layer really nicely together because they're face powders. So they are meant to be able to layer and blend, etc., which makes them great eyeshadows. I think oftentimes we like forget that at the end of the day, makeup is meant to be worn on the skin and it doesn't really matter if you're wearing it on your eyelids or on your cheeks. I'm into it. Now let's go ahead and try to incorporate these two blushes. I don't want to put them on my eyes because I feel like my eyes are in a good place, but I do want to get them on my cheeks. This could be risky, but we are going to be daring. I'm going to take this rougher 37 brush and I'm actually just going back and forth between those two middle shades. Oh, that is bright. And we are going to carefully apply that. I'm just gonna kind of concentrate it right here. Ooh, very pretty. Obviously I should have waited to put the highlighter on, but I didn't know how I was gonna incorporate these shades. Hello, hi, we are back. It has been like 13 hours since you saw me 
earlier my camera was acting up and then I ha had to hop on for my work day so off camera you did not see me do this I did apply of course like liner mascara and then I applied these two middle blush shades from the snake palette on top of what I already had on my face and everything wore beautifully throughout the day the quality is amazing it's on par with every other hourglass palette I've ever tried I also got a ton of compliments um, during my zoom calls about my makeup and everything was so easy to apply everything blended seamlessly and then the wear time is very impressive everything still looks great on my face and then on my eyes as well where I applied those powder products everything just held up really beautifully so the quality's there that's not the question the question that we're going to dive into next is like are these shades unique do you already have them in your collection etc i did do some arm swatches outdoors of both of these palettes and then i also want to go through my collection and swatch the shades that i own from that tiger palette and then we'll also do inside swatches comparisons you get the drift. I'm gonna start with the swatches. Before we move on to all of the arm swatches and comparisons of the palettes, I did wanna to quickly touch on the Leopard palette, which I do not have and I did not purchase because there was only one unique shade in that palette. And if you own palettes from years past, you actually own almost that entire palette. So I went through my collection because I've been collecting these for years and I was able to make or rather remake the leopard palette using these items that I will go through very quickly. So from this hourglass palette, I honestly wish they put years on these. I don't know which year this one is, but it's the one that has the like plastic lucite container. From this one, you get the Iridescent Rose Strobe Blush, and then you also get the Finishing Powder in Dim Light. So you already have two of the shades from that Leopard palette if you have this one. And then I have an individual shade of Mood Exposure, which is one of the other blushes in one of my favorite blushes of all time in the Leopard palette. So if you already have Mood Exposure, you have that one covered. And then if you own the Elephant palette from last year and or the Butterfly palette, you also have the rest of the shades. So in the Elephant palette, the bronzer in Lustrous Bronze Light is the same bronzer in the Leopard palette. And then in the Butterfly palette, you get the Metallic Strobe Powder in Celestial Strobe Light. So this shade here is the same highlighter in the Leopard palette. So I do have these all swatched on my arm. So I will go ahead and insert these here so you can see this is essentially, with the exception of the one limited edition shade that I don't have because it's exclusive to the Leopard palette, this is the Leopard palette swatched out for you. As you can tell from those swatches, the Jellyfish palette is definitely one for fair skin tones, whereas the Snake one is for medium to deep skin tones. And then what would be that Leopard palette is, I would say, like light to medium skin tones. I wanted to do a few more comparisons between this year's palettes and previous years. Um, mainly, I wanted to take a look at the Butterfly palette from last year and then the Snake palette. In the pan, what jumped out at me were these two blush shades in the Butterfly palette, and they reminded me of the two blush shades in the Snake palette. So let me go ahead and show you, and then I'm going to do some swatches because I am curious if there is overlap in those blush shades. Now that I'm kind of seeing them compared, 
I actually don't know if there'll be overlap, but you don't know until you swatch. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these and then I will insert arm swatches of those comparisons. So here from the Butterfly palette, we have the blush called Soft Flush, and then we have the blush called Sunset Rose. And then these are the two blushes from the Snake palette. So right here, we have the blush in the shade Sunbeam. And then here we have a blush in the shade Mystic Flush. As you can see in those swatches, the blush shades from the Butterfly palette from last year are actually very, very, very similar to those blush shades in the Snake palette. Honestly, had I known that, I probably would not have purchased the Snake palette because those are like nearly identical. So hopefully that helps you if you were like on the fence about the Snake palette and you already have the Butterfly one. Those blushes are pretty dang similar. Now let's do the same with the Elephant palette from last year and the Jellyfish palette. So here we have the Elephant palette. This bronzer from last year's Elephant palette was too orangey on me. So I am gonna also do some comparisons of the bronzer as well from the Jellyfish palette and then we'll also compare those blushes. So here we have the bronzer from the Elephant palette, which you can tell it's a lot orangier and has like shimmer in it. Whereas here is the bronzer from the Jellyfish palette. Here we have the blushes from the Elephant palette from last holiday season. And then here are the two blushes from the Jellyfish palette from this year. From those swatches, I would say the biggest difference between the Jellyfish palette and the Elephant one from last year is that bronzer. The bronzer from the Elephant palette last year was far too orangey for me, um, but the Jellyfish one is perfect for my skin tone. But as far as the other powders go and the blushes, they're very similar. So when it comes to making a decision if you wanna purchase one of these, Honestly, if you already have the palette from the previous years, if you have like the elephant or the butterfly one, I think you can skip this year's because there's nothing that different about them. Like, yes, the shades are limited edition. They're nothing crazy unique. The quality is amazing, but if you already have purchased these in the past, unless you're a collector like I am, I don't think you necessarily need them. However, if you have never purchased one of these before and you have been really dying to try the Hourglass formula, it is a good, it's not a good price point, but you get a lot of product to try for the price, if that makes sense. Like being able to try the finishing powders, the blushes, the, the strobe powders, the bronzers, etc. for $90, you do get a lot a bang for your buck in that sense. I would recommend though, if you are interested in picking these up, I'd probably wait for the Sephora sale. Right now they're only available at Hourglass at the time that I'm filming, so I will have Hourglass linked down below, but then I will link the Sephora links once they become available at Sephora on September 22nd. I hope this video was helpful in helping you determine if you're gonna pick these up or if you are gonna skip them for this year. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to do any additional swatches. I can upload those to the community tab or in a reel using any of the previous year's holiday palettes. Thanks so much for tuning in. And if you do choose to shop these and my video was helpful, I'd love if you consider shopping my affiliate links down below. Thanks so much and I will catch you in my next video.